All right, hi, I'm Bill Patton with 720 Degree Coaching, and today I have on the show David Schwartz, and we're gonna talk about money and your iPhone and privacy and probably a couple of other little things that are gonna be very practical and helpful. This should probably be a pretty speedy little interview. It's probably probably gonna be a pretty short one, but we're gonna go, we're gonna go boom, 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 really fast. David, how are you doing? Good, how are you? Excellent, and so where are you based? I'm based out of Los Angeles. Okay, terrific. And the name of your entity is? David's House of Tennis. David's House of Tennis. All right. So, um, you know, we were talking very briefly about some different payment options. And I know you made some comments about um, different levels of privacy and whatnot. So where do you want to begin this conversation? Well, we can go anywhere, but one of my favorite or the one I lean towards is Apple Pay, but I know a lot of people like Venmo. So we were talking about Venmo and I just feel if somebody pays me on Venmo and they don't make it private, then the whole world knows what happened, whether it was Taco Tuesday or tennis lessons in a series. Yeah, that, that's okay. It's an interesting point. And I don't know anything about Apple Pay and I'm actually sort of resistant to giving Apple uh, more access to putting their claws into me because um, they've got enough of my attention already. But um, no, I think one of the reasons why we're bringing this up is because now there's a new uh, care and concern about the handling of money, right? And so um, the benefits of using a you know, using technology to move the money around is, um, you know, A, you don't have to handle it, and B, uh, it makes the transaction, I think, a little bit easier, a little bit less painful for con the consumer. What's, what are any other good benefits of using an app or whatnot to avoid handling the cash? One of the things I was thinking about besides the viruses that is happening right now, and if somebody wanted to, I don't want to say secretively, but so a client will text me and in the text, the Apple Pay shows up if you have an iPhone. If you have an Android, there's Google Pay. They're very similar platforms. They're protected by your ATM or your credit card. I tell my clients, don't use your credit card because you're going to get a fee, but some people want to use that and that's fine because they're looking for points and things like that. But for example, in Apple Pay, if you are an iPhone user and you go to the text, there's a little black ring, that's the Apple, and you tap it. And so if we were texting today and saying, hi, how's it going? And I would send you a dollar, for example. In that text dialogue, that dollar would then show up in your wallet. So when you go to a place, I'm not gonna mention or marketing anyone in particular, but when <laughs> you go to a place, you would tap pay. So that dollar, you gave me or I gave you when you went to that place, you can now tap your phone to their little machine and use it, whatever dollar amount you were going to use. Right. Right. So you know, I think there's, for some strange reason, I think there's a voyeuristic pleasure of Venmo. I think people like having people see that they're taking a tennis lesson or that they, they paid their friend back for taco Tuesday or, you know, then, they like to have multiple emojis that denote uh, uh, that they had cocktails. Sure. No, no, no. And I'm not, I think that is cool, uh, cool yeah. the social side and I don't want to take away from it. So if a couple of my clients use it, fine. But if the majority of my, or all my clients used it, the list would be, let's just say quite populated and people would have, Oh wow, this guy is really busy or he's making a lot of tennis balls. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, it's, I guess it's a concern for somebody, but I'm, I'm not so worried about it myself, but it is a good point to, to, that it is, it is more or less public to those people. So, so, you know, we've got Venmo, we have PayPal, which I don't particularly like because they take a fee. And then if you, then you have to lie about it being whatever in order to avoid the fee. And I'm not a big fan of that. I agree. Um, so Apple pay, there's no fee. And, and Google Pay, there's no fee. And Venmo, there's no fee either. I'm just saying sometimes, like if I, if I get some Venmo, let's just say it was $100, for example, and I drop it into my bank account and my daughter wants some money. If I give her Venmo, she has to make another move 
to get it into her ATM card to let's say go to the gas station or whatever she's going to buy. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That's interesting. So, I mean, one thing that I know is that they're making their money by parking it for a bit. So like for instance, Venmo, if I got paid, you know, for a lesson today and then I do a direct deposit, it's going, it doesn't get there for one to three days. So, so they've, they're banking my money for a little bit and making, making a lot of interest collectively on everybody's money. And that, I'm, I'm actually, I'm fine with that. And I'm not a, you know, necessarily urgently needing my money right away, or I can pay 1% to them if I need that money instantly. What does a Apple Pay do? Do they have something similar? So in Apple Pay, it goes to an Apple cash card. So when you are looking at your iPhones, forever who's looking at this right now, go to your wallet and your phone. And then in the wallet, there's called Apple Cash. And then from Apple Cash, the money sits there, let's say the dollar. And you say, wow, I really need that dollar in my bank account. Your ATM card is tied to it. And yes, they're going to say, do you want to send it now? And it does take a day or two. And I'm guess they're banking on it as well. If you leave it in Apple Cash and it was, for example, $20 or a lesson for some sort, like my son went to a baseball pitching lesson and I asked the guy, I'd rather not give you cash because I don't feel in this time that I'm going to give you a dirty bill that someone may have handed me. I don't want to pass it on to you. He didn't, he accepted the cash that time. But in the future, for example, if you hand me 20 for something, a tennis lesson, and I hand the 20 now on in Apple Cash, to the next person there was it was all digitally done yeah and it, it goes instantaneously to apple cash it's when you want the apple cash to go to your atm like you're saying like venmo they're going to wait a day and borrow the interest yeah i mean i think a part of the convenience of the electronic stuff is it also means for me less trips to the bank so you know i have people who still pay me by check and and i will always accept cash for me, I mean, I, my comfort zone is I'm fine with it because I'm going to wash my hands before I eat. And, um, you know, and, I mean, and, and also it's an interesting thing, the fascination that people have now all of a sudden with germs, right, and with disease. And, I mean, still the flu still is more dangerous than what the coronavirus currently is. So that could change. But why haven't we taken the flu more seriously? But, you know, and, and then there's another interesting thing. There's a counterintuitive thing. People are using all these anti antibacterial soaps because they're so afraid of germs. But because they're using anti antibacterial soaps all the time, they're actually reducing their, the good bacteria in their skin that would fight the bad bacteria. And so it's a counterintuitive thing. So... Um, or as my Polish boss used to say, you have to eat a bushel of dirt before you can die. <laughs> well, I even know that in the last few days when I've been places, I actually went to a doctor's office for something not related to this. And they had a hand sanitizer and it wasn't automatic. So I had to touch the top and I thought, mm -hmm. well, it's not clean on the top. Someone else touched it with their hand. I might be getting it now. I just put some sanitizer and I don't know. Could go back no, there's, a, there's a hilarious video circul circulating about the rigmarole that the guy has to go through because he washed his hands but then he had to touch something dirty before he left yeah. <laughs> so i mean you, you know i mean i i can see i i, I see the, the that yeah maybe we can reduce some you know uh germ transmission or whatnot but Ultimately, we're still going to have to wash our hands and we're still going to have to wipe after we get done. And then I like the elbow on the, on the doorknob because I, I never want to touch a doorknob on an ex exiting a bathroom. Yeah, I will either pull my sleeve over my hand or I am using the paper towel that I just dried my hands with to grab that doorknob because there's right. a zillion people touching it. Yeah, so um, all right. And I want to throw one more thing out there. I saw some, I saw a report and, you know, I, I can't verify this, but I saw something that the, all 100% of the touch screens in a region at McDonald's were found to have traces of feces. 
And I saw that. And so, I mean, I don't disbelieve it. I'm not saying it's the gospel truth, but I mean, I think we know that people who are working in fast food restaurants are not, you know, the uh, most cleanly people on the planet. Um, there was a Babylon Bee article that Burger King had sent out an email to its customers that now they were going to have hand washing. No. It is a satirical, that's a satirical headline. So, uh, but anyway, so that, it, what other kind of things are powerful about our phones and our tech that, that help us with finances and the like? Well, some of the things, again, speaking as a tennis pro and one of the topics that I have that's going around the country, I'm not saying that Apple Pay is the live and die, but if you had Apple Pay and you went to McDonald's, you can tap with the Apple Cash and you didn't have to touch their screen after you made your verbal order. Mm, yep, yep. Yeah, I'm actually brand new to taking my debit card and tapping it. That's, and there's, there's also, an, oh, this was something, I was actually told that this is more secure than, than entering the chip in. That the tapping, yeah. tapping, you know more about that than me? Yeah, so take your ATM card and put it in your wallet and your iPhone. I will walk the dog sometimes to the bank when I have an important check, and I will take my phone that has the ATM card in it and tap it to the machine. So it's copying, and again, I understand there's some scarce of the security. The phone can tap the ATM machine you then do have to put in the code by touching the buttons in the ATM machine, but you're now in. So I didn't have to bring my ATM card, slide it in the machine, and they could be copying or someone could be scanning it. The card can also tap it, but I say if you have your ATM card in your phone, you're tapping your phone to the ATM machine, you're getting into the ATM machine. In this case, I need to make a deposit, which I know you can do on your phone, and I can tell you that later in, in our next talk that's going to get us to the next <laughs> that's, that's a little presumptuous david schwartz absolutely next talk ready to go. <laughs> oh i didn't realize that david and i were starting a series of talks um we're starting a series this is one of 15 <laughs> minus 14 anyway yeah. <laughs> yeah but i appreciate the humor that's fun stuff all right so um, now here's an interesting thing. I mean, I would say let's flip it around because as a consumer, part of what, what creates this overspending is the convenience of that, right? We use, we, use, we use plastic and we use electronics a little too much and then we don't feel the pain of the money going out. Correct. So I, I'm a big I fan of Ramsey and I like to pay cash because then when you see the cash going out, then you feel that pain. On the other hand, we want to reduce that pain for our consumers. Correct. So, because um, unfortunately, we care more about getting paid than we do about their financial responsibility. No, I, again, right now I'm having clients who some have yeah. continued the Apple Pay and somebody just sent me some today and I was very, very grateful because they didn't take the lesson and they're like, hey, we know that you're not getting anything, here's something. And that was that's very, awesome. that was pretty awesome. No, that's, that's great. And you know, that's, that's when you sort of get the payoff for being a coach who's really fully engaged and, and they appreciate that you're more than just a coach. Because if you were just a coach, then they wouldn't even think about that. So, all right, any final thoughts before we wrap this thing up? So one more thing, and I'm not gonna keep using the word Apple Pay, but in Apple Cash, when you do have your list there, you can look to see, like Venmo, you can look at the list and know like, oh, they paid me on this date. If it, let's just say, I, my clients do a four week session. So they pay for four privates, here was the number, this is when they paid. So it's a reference point, rather than having to go find the check in the, you know, the machine or your bank log, it's right there on your phone. Then yes. I would say on the first day, let's just say the first Wednesday of the month was lesson one. The next Wednesday was lesson two, et cetera. Oh, we, we had rain on lesson three. I put that in my calendar. Now they have a carryover or we try to double up next week. So it's kind that of- is, 
That is a great point because, yeah, one of the difficulties of being a, a pro is when there's a dispute about when about delivery of service. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's it's great because, yeah, it's it's pretty much locked in and neither of you could easily edit it or forget or whatnot. Yeah, and then as long as they're referencing a rain day, or in my case, we've had some fire days, so I write that down next to their name. I've been writing down the coronavirus days and seeing how long it lasts. Right, right. Okay, well, I appreciate you coming on. I think this is good to keep this kind of short because uh, if we went on too long, I think people would tune out pretty quick. But um, Thank you for sharing some incredible tools and some really thoughtful uh, ideas about um, how to get paid and how to do it safely and, and, with, and more conveniently. All right. Thank you, David. Thank you. Have a great day. Take care. Bye-bye.